The fallout of House Bill 6 is haunting the state of Ohio again. Today, new criminal charges have been filed in the largest corruption scandal in state history. Three people linked to the scandal now face dozens of charges. And due to the gravity of these latest charges, we are bringing you team coverage. NBC4's Natalie Fami is at the state house and has been following the developments of the scandal for the last year. While our Colleen Marshall took some time to speak with a legal expert about those charges filed today, we're going to kick off our coverage with Natalie at the State House with the latest update on the case. Natalie. Jared Jennifer, the indictment sheds a new light on some of the details involved in Ohio's nuclear plant bribery scheme. And for the first time, some of the key first energy players are being held accountable. The crimes committed by these individuals impacted the pocketbooks of every hardworking Ohioan. Severe legal consequences and public loathing are the just outcomes of such betrayal. Nearly one year ago, Ohio's former House Speaker was sentenced to 20 years in prison for his part in the $60 million bribery scheme to pass House Bill 6. Legislation to bail out First Energy nuclear energy plants at the expense of Ohioans. Power is inherently seductive and corrosive. Part of House Bill 6 is still on the books, though the part that is directly tied to the scheme and First Energy has since been repealed. Now, former chairman of the Public Utilities Commission of Ohio, Sam Randazzo, ex-CEO of First Energy, Chuck Jones, and a former VP of the company, Michael Dowling, are all being charged by the state on 27 combined charges. The indictment alleges the two First Energy executives ultimately paid Randazzo more than $4 million for his part in the scheme. It was paid by the taxpayers and was supposed to work for you. But instead, he worked for them as their agent, their lobbyist, their ally. The multi-million dollar bribe is something First Energy has admitted to as part of a deferred prosecution agreement, saying it was to, quote, defraud the public. While First Energy was benefiting from House Bill 6, First Energy was also a victim of the consistent thefts that was occurring. The indictment says the three men formed the core of a corrupt enterprise. The indictment details the scheme in which the three men together stole money from First Energy and wrote legislative provisions worth unearned millions of dollars. This indictment is about way more than one piece of legislation. It is about the hostile capture of a significant portion of Ohio's state government by deception, betrayal, and dishonesty. All three men are scheduled to be arraigned tomorrow afternoon in Summit County. In a statement, a spokesperson for the governor calls the charges very serious, saying they have full faith in the criminal justice system. Local for you at the State House, I'm Natalie Fahmy, NBC4. Natalie, thank you. It is important to remember Sam Randazzo already faces 11 felony charges in federal court related to the first energy bribery scandal. Now, federal investigators uncovered the alleged bribery scheme and First Energy admitted to paying Randazzo more than $4 million in exchange for his support of the massive bailout bill. So what happens now that Randazzo faces federal and state charges? Our Colleen Marshall says the answer might surprise you, Colleen. And that's because, Jared, it all depends on who takes him to trial first. I spoke today to David DeVillers, a former U.S. attorney who actually led the federal prosecution at the beginning stages of the House Bill 6 investigation. All of this at about the same time that the FBI raided Randazzo's Columbus condo. Now, DeVillers says it's clear the state and federal investigators have been exchanging information that State Attorney General Dave Yost has been coordinating all this with the U.S. Attorney's Office, and it's possible the defendants and their attorneys have been talking about possible plea deals. The cases are parallel to some extent, he says, but if and when these cases go to trial, it will be important which court takes the case first. There's a petite policy which says that the federal government can't prosecute somebody that's been convicted or pled guilty to a defense that's the same charges, same facts scenario as, as a state case. Why do you think that they haven't coordinated that better? Why, why not figure out? I mean, would it be possible that he could be found guilty at one level and, and not guilty at another? Yeah, that is possible. But if, if, for example, it only goes one way. So if the, if the state 
were to go first and convict or acquit Mr. Randazzo for the same charge, same course of conduct, then via the petite policy, the federal government wouldn't be able to prosecute. Now, the other way around isn't true. So if the federal government went first and convicted Mr. Randazzo, then the state could still go, go forward with it. It's all tied to a possible double jeopardy. DeViller says it's likely state and federal prosecutors are coordinating all this. And right now, Randazzo is the only individual facing both federal and state charges. The two former First Energy executives accused today on the state level are the first people from First Energy to face criminal charges. The utility itself already pleaded guilty to bribing state officials in that federal consent decree. We'll have more on those First Energy officials tonight at 6.